We've debunked a lot of myths and folklore when it comes to the weather above us, from the atmosphere all the way to space. But what about below the Earth's surface? The theory behind so-called earthquake weather dates all the way to ancient Greece. Yep. Around 330 BC, philosopher Aristotle wrote that he believed earthquakes were caused by winds trapped in underground caves trying to escape out. He theorized that all this air would cause the weather to become hot and calm before any seismic activity. Aristotle later went even further, saying things like fireballs or even meteors could also happen. Fortunately, we know that that's not the case. And luckily for us here in the 21st century, we know what actually causes earthquakes. Thanks to seismology or the study of earthquakes, scientists have proven all this shaking isn't because of wind, but rather it happens when the Earth's tectonic plates or faults grind or push against each other and then suddenly slip, causing the ground to tremble. Now, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, there is not enough data to support a connection between earthquakes and weather. But there have been cases where big changes in atmospheric pressure caused by something like a hurricane can have a gradual impact on how earthquakes are triggered. Another thing to keep in mind is the impact humans can have in causing earthquakes on a smaller scale. Examples include changes in reservoir water levels, which can alter the amount of stress on the faults around them and earthquakes induced by the injection of fluids deep into the Earth's surface, such as fracking. Bottom line, there's no real evidence when it comes to using the weather to predict when an earthquake will happen. And that's what the science says about this earthquake weather theory. It's time to clear the air on some tornado-related myths that may be out there. If you ever find yourself driving in the middle of a highway during a tornado warning, never seek shelter under an overpass. Not only can you still be impacted by the flying debris, the bridge itself is not a strong enough structure against a tornado. On top of that, the pileup of cars underneath an overpass may block or trap people and emergency vehicles trying to get to safety and can cause crashes. Another myth is that bigger cities are protected from tornadoes because of all the tall buildings. Large metro areas like Nashville and Birmingham, to name a few, have both been significantly impacted by tornadoes in recent years. It may seem that bigger cities aren't as prone to being hit by one, but that's just because there are more rural areas. When seeking shelter, you've probably heard your local meteorologist talking about getting to a basement or finding a safe space in your home. The myth that the southwest corner of a home will protect you from debris is an outdated belief. Tornadoes move in all directions. When seeking shelter, you must find an interior room on the lowest level of your building, away from windows. During the severe weather season, make sure you have a preparedness and safety plan in place. With THV 11 Weather, I'm Corrales Ortiz. We're all familiar with tornadoes. These violent rotating columns of air found at the base of a thunderstorm. They can reach sizes of up to one mile in width and have winds as high as 250 miles per hour. But sometimes it can be hard to differentiate between other funnel cloud lookalikes. So let's see what the science says. Ever heard of a cold air funnel? Well, this formation occurs beneath showers or weak thunderstorms when the air aloft is especially cold. These tend to be harmless and small in nature, rarely ever touching down or causing damage. We also have landspouts. These don't form in thunderstorms like tornadoes. They usually happen beneath cumulus clouds and are also weak rope-like features. Unlike tornadoes, their rotation happens closer to the surface. They also become what many know as water spouts once they form or move over water. Then there are even smaller scale formations. Dust devils are rapidly rotating winds that occur due to strong surface heating. They become visible once they start picking up dust or debris. But what makes these different is that dust devils usually occur best on clear, dry, hot afternoons. On average, they rain anywhere from 10 to 300 feet, but can reach heights of up to 1,000 feet with winds reaching 60 miles per hour or more. That's strong enough to cause some minor damage. Finally, a gustnado is another whirlwind formation that stems from the downburst of severe thunderstorms. But this one is caused when the winds create a strong enough rush at the ground. This could cause rotation to develop and create these features. So here are a few tips to help you differentiate between a tornado and these other types of funnels. Is there a low hanging wall cloud like this sticking out from the bottom of a severe thunderstorm? 
If so, can you see any rotation? If you answered yes to both, then you most likely are observing a tornadic funnel forming versus the other kinds. Knowing how to spot these could come in handy as we enter severe weather season. With Sign Sets, I'm Corrales Ortiz. Let's talk about El Nino and La Nina. El Nino is Spanish for the Nino. <laughs> All jokes aside, in scientific terms, they are warm and cool phases of a climate pattern that occur in the Pacific. Basically, disruptions of sea surface temperatures can influence changes in the atmosphere, which can then affect temperatures and even precipitation globally, including here in Arkansas. La Nina represents the cool phase of this pattern. What happens is that strong winds push warmer water away from the eastern Pacific, causing colder water to rise to the surface. This leads to the jet stream moving more north over the U.S., which can give us more warmer conditions during the winter here in the south, and it can also lead to drought. Now, the opposite is true during El Nino, that warmer water moves back towards the eastern Pacific, leading to higher than average sea surface temperatures. This, in turn, causes the jet stream to move back southward, which can lead to cooler and wetter conditions. Normally, El Nino and La Nina peak during the winter, so depending on which one is expected, meteorologists can use them to help predict what kind of winter we may have. So that leads to the big question. What can we expect this year? Well, according to NOAA, we are entering a La Nina. This means we should probably plan for those warmer and drier conditions here in the south. But don't let that trick you. Remember, these are average conditions we may experience during a winter season. A warmer winter doesn't mean that we won't have our fair share of cold spells or snow. And that's what the science says about El Nino and La Nina. What on earth is a bomb cyclone? This may sound a bit scary, but it actually doesn't have anything to do with what you might think. It actually stems from the word bombogenesis. This is a term used by meteorologists to describe a rapidly intensifying area of low pressure. To get that weather bomb classification, the storm must drop at least 24 millibars within 24 hours. A millibar is a measurement of atmospheric pressure. So how does this drastic change in pressure happen? Well, it's usually when a cold air mass collides with a warm air mass, and these dueling air masses can light the metaphorical fuse. Storms that go through bombogenesis occur more frequently in the Pacific, but don't rule out the Atlantic. Sometimes we see this happen with nor'easters, which can impact the entire eastern seaboard of the U.S. These storms can produce tropical storm and hurricane strength winds with heavy rain and even flooding. And in the winter, they're known to dump several feet of heavy snow and causing blizzard-like conditions. But keep in mind, not every strong storm goes through bombogenesis. Although they can happen year-round, October to March seems to be when we see this most commonly occur. While the name bomb cyclone is not the official term, it is a lot easier to say and remember and definitely gets your attention. And that's what the sign says about bomb cyclones. <laughs> 